Today, I've got some easy autumn leaf DIYs for you. Keep watching. I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own. Welcome back. So we're gonna start off with the wood cutout sign. Here are the paints that you're going to need. It's a pumpkin orange, a leaf green, and then the antiquing wax. You can use the leaf cutouts that you get from Dollar Tree. These are from last year. I had a few left. You're going to need three for this particular project and you can see one of them I'm recycling. I'm going to use some little plastic cups here to mix my paint and water. We're going to start off with the one that I experimented with. This is the back of a sign that I used um, for another project. So we're going to take a little bit of the antiquing wax. We're going to water it down and I'm going to grab a brush. Start putting that on because we're going to use this as a stain and that's why you make it a little bit weaker with the water. But you don't have to do it this way. You can put it on full strength if you want a darker color. I'm just gonna go back over and wipe it off. And be careful when you choose your leaves because this one has a distinctive line through it that doesn't look very good. So I'm gonna flip it over and use the other side. Next, we're gonna start working on our green leaf. I'm gonna add some to that same little cup going to add a little antiquing wax to that and just a tad of water then you're going to mix that up really well i'm just using a little stick here sometimes it can be the texture of the antiquing wax a little different from the acrylic paint so you really got to work with it to get them to mix they kind of want to separate um, from my experience then i'm just using a wet baby wipe to apply these so you can see that you can do it with a brush or baby wipe. Then I'm just going to rub it on. The lighter hand you use is going to give you a lighter color result. If you want it richer, then put it on a little bit thicker. I wasn't really sure which direction I was going with initially with this, so I just started off putting it down light, and then you can see by the time I get to this side of the leaf, I'm putting it down a little heavier. You can layer it on, so don't be worried if it's not giving you the initial result that you want. Doing a little at a time and light layers is a little bit easier to control than just going straight on with the heavy look and then maybe you don't like it really heavy. So I'm going all around the stem, kind of getting in the edges too, and then I'm going to put it aside to dry with the other one. Now we're going to start in another bowl with some water and some paint and a little bit of that antiquing wax. This is just to keep the brightness out of the colors so that instead of looking bright and springy, our colors are going to look more rustic and aged. Now I'm just testing my color here on the stem. And I do like the way it looks, so I'm not gonna alter anything. I'm gonna take a fresh wipe and start laying that on the leaf. What I love about doing it this way is that you can see the texture of the wood in the leaf. Watch how this texture just pops out as you lay the paint down. can see there the texture in the wood it is gorgeous and it just you know leaves have veins and leaves have texture and curves and and that sort of thing so I think that showing it off on a project like this is just a really nice rustic way to put you know a little rustic decor in your home I guess is what I'm trying to say so here's the result after they're all dry and I love 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 the colors and how they turned out so now you just need to decide how you want to lay this out, what kind of pattern you want to use, and so that's what you see me doing now. Pay no mind to the glue spots that are on that brown leaf back there. There's nothing I can do about it. You won't have that on your project. And there are ways to cover it up, of course. So I have decided that I like this. I'm gonna take my glue gun and put it down. I put it down on the underside, uh, on the bottom leaf and I shouldn't have. You can see when I had to go to the orange leaf that I actually put it on that leaf first because see I had some glue that was in that crack I had to clean up that you didn't see. So it would be better just to put it on the upper leaf and then put it down. You don't have any mess left over or peeking through all those cracks if you do it this way. You don't have to put it on straight like this. I don't know why. To me it just looked good this way so I went ahead and left it. I'm just lining it up where I want it, pressing it down. And see the little, it looks like a little Christmas tree in there, doesn't it? In the center. 
Okay, so now we need to make a hanger for it, and I've decided that we're going to make a bead hanger. You got to make a knot at the end of your twine that is large enough to keep the bead from slipping off. So just do that according to the size of your beads that you choose. You know my little trick here with the hot glue on the end to make a little point so it's easier to thread the beads. These are thrifted beads. I've used them on many different projects. I had a huge bag of them. And you're just going to start feeding them through. I used 24 beads for mine based on how far I wanted my sign to hang down. So you do whatever's appropriate. You can see here, I'm just measuring to see if this is how long I want it. And then I'll make my knot in the end. And you can see these beads have a really large opening. So it takes, I think I ended up using three knots in each one of these. And you want to layer those knots right on top of each other. Okay. So see, you can see where I stained that other side. You're going to use some hot glue and press your knot right into the hot glue on the tips of the outer leaves. And this is going to be our hanger. And you can go in there after that glue is, you know, set up a little bit and trim off the excess. You can feed it through that hole if you want to. Um, can certainly do it that way but I have another idea of how to cover those holes and you'll see that in just a moment now I'm gonna just put some beads underneath there to hold it up until my glue is dry you can see I'm just kind of that way I don't glue it down to my table and now we're gonna make some cute little easy bunny ear or shoelace bows to go on the top of each of those leaves Kind of gives it a little bit of a farmhouse look, I think. Gonna make the bow as big as you want it. Cut your tails down, and then I'll use each bow to measure against each other so I get them as close together as I can get them in size. And then, you know, I kind of eyeball the tails too to make sure the tails are the same length. That might not be important to you, and if it's not, you can skip that step. It almost looks like I have threaded it right through the leaf and tied it off with a bow. But I didn't want to leave the inside without a bow, because I think they, they all would look better if they looked similar. So I'm just going to add one over the hole in this one as well. And the next step is going to be completely up to you. This is how it looks. Now you got to think about what you want to do to your sign. If you want to leave it alone, if you want to put a metal sign, this came from Dollar Tree, I think. I may have thrifted it, but you can get the big metal signs from Dollar Tree. You can take things off of other projects, put them wherever you like. Be sure you follow me on my social media, Pinterest, Facebook, and Instagram. Okay, number two is a 3D leaf sign. This is a sign that has come out recently at Dollar Tree, at mine anyway. I'm just going to use this to make a very, another very easy project. You're going to pop this off. You can save those little roses for another project if they stay together. Probably going to go in my Valentine crafting box. If you can peel this off, you may certainly do so. I tried and did not have very much look, so I just decided to work with it. I'm going to take some of this blue and white plaid paper. It's it's a background paper, but you could certainly use gift wrap or craft paper, whatever you have. Blue is a very good color this year for fall, so I'm going to go with this. And I am cutting like a preschooler. But you're going to trim this out and then take a glue stick, put that down all over there especially around the edges. Don't forget your edges, your corners. You want to make sure that this stays on. We always want to achieve a high-end look, so we're going to do all those little extra things to make our projects look beautiful and last a long time. So once I get that lined up, and I know it's a plaid, so you want to be sure that you kind of line it up so you know that you don't have crooked um, lines whenever you turn your project over. So that's what I did, and then I'm just pressing it down. And I put my mat underneath there 
because I know that I'm going to be trimming this paper off. It's not important to use any type of uh, sanding on this because it's going to be inside the frame and you won't really see it. I'm taking my Dollar Tree utility knife. It's just in a three pack, so be sure you pick those up if you are looking for some. I think it was in the automotive section. And then trim that out. Doesn't have to be perfect because like I say, it's gonna be in a frame. So there we go. Nice clean back, nice straight front. And this is how it will look. You can paint your frame if you'd like, but I um, decided I wanted to leave that alone. All right, here's some options for you. You can take any type of a chipboard wood leaf or leaf stickers or anything you want to make some type of a pattern. This would certainly be cute if you wanted to use this technique. You can use these faux leaves, like the silk leaves, I guess you would call them. You can pick them off of vines and branches that, that you get at Dollar Tree if you like. You can use scraps. And now, since I've decided that I love this yellow and orange with this blue background, I want to make it look a little more realistic by cutting off those little knobby ends at a slant as if they've broken off the tree. And I want to make them dimensional. So I'm going to take some of these little blocks that you get out of the Crafter Square at Dollar Tree and use those as little, like a mini riser for my leaf so that it will stand away from the frame and really make some dimension as if the leaf is free falling. And I love that. Add your hot glue, press that down, and then I'm going to do one more. I've got some tape stuck on my hand. And then just secure that right there. I'm not going to put anything underneath the bottom of the leaf because I want it to appear as it's pointing downward. We're going to do the same thing with the other leaf. And I've decided we're going to make these falling leaves. So we're going to put the tips of them going downward and both of the branch parts going upward. That's all you need to secure these. You can use Jenga blocks too. And it won't show once you have it hanging up. You see how it stands out? It looks really nice considering that this is sort of a boxed frame as well. It looks, I think, looks very cute. And it was so simple to do. Just go ahead and clamp your back back down. And there you go. Now, you can use it as a sitting sign or I cut this off of something that originally came from Target. It was a little flag sign. I cut the flag sign off and I kept the, I, I don't know, that straight piece there on the bottom and the beads all intact so I could use them again. So what do you think about that? Think about that. You can take pieces off of other projects and other things that you find at the thrift store or Dollar Tree and use them in a way that maybe they haven't been used previously. And I thought that would be a really good way to use it on the sign and I love the results that I get from it. I'm just clamping this down until it dries and stays in place. If you want to use something more permanent and you intend to hang this up out, you know, where it may be getting some weather or a lot of people walking by you might want to use some E6000 or some super glue on it. But it works for me just like this. What do you think? This is easy. You could do this, guys. You could totally do this for just a few dollars. And remember, it's inspiration. Number three, mini leaf sitter. Okay, this is the third one, and this is easy too going to use the craft knife. We're going to use some type of a base. I'm just going to use a wood round ornament. I have a square leaf. You can find these about anywhere. And then a little pad of fall paper. I'm looking for a color or a print that I like. And I believe that I will use this grateful sign. Give thanks, Thanksgiving. Yep, this will be a good one for this project. You can also use little fabrics. These are some little vintage fabric pieces or vintage inspired. I'm not sure that they're vintage. This glue stick will work perfectly to put this down. Again, I've said it a billion times. I know I say it a lot. But get all those corners. Get all the edges. You want it to stick down well for you because it's easier to deal with when it comes to cutting it out. And it gives it a better finished look. I'm putting this on at an angle. I'm going to press it down, 
I'm gonna take my wallpaper smoother and smooth it down from the inside outward. We want those bubbles to run away from us. So we press them to the outside. Okay, now whatever you wanna use to cut out, you can use to cut out. I'm just gonna use my little utility knife, my craft knife, my cutter, whatever you wanna call it. These are not gonna be perfect and I am not aiming for perfection because in this project, we will be using some sanding to get our edges in the right shape. So you can see there's some little excess that didn't come off, just like that. Instead of the sanding block, I'm gonna use a folded piece of sandpaper because it will get into those cracks and corners and curves a little bit easier. So I'm just gonna use this to start with, and you can see there that it is sanding it smoothly down. It's taking those little white pieces right off. And by the way, you can paint the edges if you prefer a painted look, but I, I like that it is kind of a raw look. Check this trick out. This is an emery board or a fingernail file. You can use this to get in those tight spaces to really, really work those little pieces out of there. Okay, so once it is done, this is how it looks. You can Mod Podge over the type if, top if you would like, but you don't have to. And you could also do both sides if you wanted something reversible. So here's an option. I always try to give you an option. You can put this leaf down on the raw wood, like this, for a rustic look. But if you're going for something a little more cottage core, you can take a piece of this fabric or something that is coordinated, but with a vintage sort of look, and you could put it down like that. But for my home, I'm gonna leave it a little bit more on the rustic side. So I'm trying to see where I need my glue to go, and I'm gonna add it straight on down on my wood round. So this is it so far once the glue is set up. And I'm gonna layer one more leaf on top. This is a leaf ornament. This came from the thrift store. You can use a regular leaf on top and put a sticker on it or you can put a sticker right on top of your leaf, whatever you wanna do. And I'm just gonna add that down. It doesn't fit perfectly like a puzzle piece, but it's close enough. And I'm not looking for perfection. Look at that, isn't that sweet? Thankful for you, I'm thankful for you. All my subscribers, anybody who watches my videos, every thumbs up, every share, every like, I am very thankful for all of that. I never take it for granted. Okay, so to finish off this little leaf, I'm gonna just use a piece of this cotton twine, make me a tiny little bow, and I'm gonna put that right on that little opening on the top. Do whatever you like with that. What do you think about that? Isn't that sweet? That's so cute and would look so nice in a vignette or on a tiered tray. Okay, so I have left my leaf sign open. I want suggestions. How should I finish it? Once I finish it, if I use your idea, I'm gonna share that on Instagram and give you credit for it. So be sure you give me suggestions on that big leaf sign. Okay. These are the three easy signs or easy ideas for leaves for fall on a budget using Dollar Tree items and thrifted things. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye.